Welcome to All Things Food Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Kim. This is where we talk about all things related to the wonderful world of food. On today's episode, we discuss the best Chicago food chain restaurant, Portillo's. If you're from Chicago, you've never heard of Portillo's, shame on you. If you are not from Chicago, you're welcome. You know, if you go to a a city, you want to experience something that's unique. I hope you do. I do. And whenever I go to a city, I want to go to what what the locals enjoy, right? So usually I'm looking for some hole in the wall. I'm looking for some singular restaurant that is the best in its class, the best at what they do, at least for that city. I hopefully just for that city and I can't find it anywhere else because it's special. That's why I'm traveling. That's why I'm there. However, there are some chain restaurants that are so iconic, so unique, that even though there are multiple locations, it's still worth going to if you haven't gone to one. For example, White Castle. White Castle is all over the nation, but you know what? It's awesome. It's delicious. If you're in a certain state of mind, um, they could be like your salvation for that night, right? Uh, nothing like a crave case of sliders, you know, some cheap fries, and you're pretty much set for the night. Uh, another example, Waffle House. Waffle House is also all over America. Um, and if you've never been to one, it's worth visiting just for its iconic status, if nothing else. I mean, they do cheap breakfast food. There it is. And that, that, those are national chains that are worth going to. That, that's, that's, that's my point. Let's go local. Locally, again, there are restaurants that are worth checking out, even though you can find them in a bunch of places within that area, and Portillo's is one of them. Uh, Portillo's is kind of a Chicago institution um, that serves all sorts of sandwiches, and I'll get to the items that you should, that are worthy of note there. And it's important because even though there are multiple chains, there, there are multiple chains for a reason. It's because it's delicious and it's popular. If people were to visit Chicago, regardless of restaurant chain or not, I'm going to recommend Portillo's. It's that good, and I think it's that symbolic of Chicago food. And we kind of see this disappearing. We see localized restaurant chains kind of disappearing. For example, uh, Shake Shack. Shake Shack is awesome. It's uh, it's, 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 it's good. It's not awesome. It's, it's delicious. But just really expensive for, for my taste. I, I, you know, they have they have locations all over the world now. Um, before, for many years, they were just in New York where they started, and then they just poof, exploded, right? And it's kind of like the East Coast competitor to In and Out. In and Out is one of those also local chains that are worth going to, even though there are many locations in, you know, California and the Southwest. So Shake Shack, you know, I, I've I've had Shake Shack burgers in Korea. Um, where I paid like $25 for like a burger, shake, and fries, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I always think about the, the Pulp Fiction scene with Uma Thurman and John Travolta. You know, it's a $5 shake. $5. It's like milkshake, like they, it's milk and ice cream, right? And she's like, yeah. And she's like, is it really worth $5? And at the end, he's like, I don't know if it's, Worth five dollars, but that's a good freaking shake. And there you go. Um, I digress. So iconic restaurant chains are disappearing because they're either going national or they're just gone. My purpose for today's episode is just to show love and introduce, talk about the wonderful world that is Portillo's because y'all need to check out this restaurant. Um, I'm going to have to look later on at some time down the future for photos of Portillo's. I think the last photos I took of Portillo's were like four years ago. So I'm either just going to get lazy and pull them from the website or go deep dive into my uh, media library and see if I can find where I got them. Let's talk about the items. I'm going to talk about five items from Portillo's. First one, the burgers. Okay, burgers, they're good burgers. Uh, They're not extraordinary. Um, They're not the best I've ever had, but they're really solid. I would be very happy with a Portillo's burger. 
But then my next question would be like, well, why didn't you get the other thing instead? Right? Coming up. But the burgers, I mean, um, their buns can be a little too, like, bready, you know, too thick and too, they have too much substance. But the burger patty, whenever I mooch off of my wife or other people, you know, grab a little piece, it's a good burger. It's charred. It's got all the trimmings, you know, kind of like a, a deluxe Whopper kind of deal, right? It's a, it's a good solid burger. If there's nothing to be ashamed about. It's delicious. If someone were to get a burger from Portillo's, I'd be like, you know what? That's a good choice. If you don't want the other thing, are you sure you don't want the other thing? If you don't want the other thing, then you know what? The burger is a good, fine choice. They have good burgers. Talk about the fries. Fries, you know, they're, they're good fries. They're, they're crinkle cut. Um, you know, the, the boxy shape, it goes like this up the ladder. Uh, they're good, good fries, good onion rings. Um, yeah, it's, it's solid. Nothing remarkable, but nothing bad about it at all. Garden salad. Let's talk about their garden salad. They have a bunch of different salads. In the past, what they would do is they would have two lines, one line for the fried stuff and the meats and all that. And then they would have a salad line and you'd have to go. If you want to get both of them, you have to order them separately. But since I came back to Chicago, I realized that they had combined them into one line. Good move, Portillo's. Uh, they have like the garbage salad, which is like kind of everything that you can think of and is thrown into one thing and drenched and, and just tossed. And, and it's, kind of a, it's kind of gross, but people love it. If the garbage salad or the chopped salad, which is like a lighter version of the garbage salad, if that's your thing. Go for it. And they're huge. These are huge portions. They do not skimp on that. Lovely. Uh, but their garden salad, though, is actually a really like legit salad. Uh, I used to be a personal trainer back in the day. Um, and even when I was on top of my dieting, on you know, not dieting in terms of like dieting to lose weight, but just like keeping in control of what I ate, even back then, I would get the garden salad because it's just... A lovely medley of vegetables and sal- you know of, of I'm not a big salad guy, but I would still get the garden salad with their with their house dressing. And here's a here's a trick. Now they they do come in these containers, you know the salad containers that are lovely for pouring on the dressing and shaking them up so that everything's coated. That's a great strategy, and you should totally go for it. But you can also, and this is a, you know again a trick I pulled pull from my training days, um, dip your fork into the dressing container, and then take a stab at a bunch of lettuce and then eat it that way. What you'll find is that you'll still get the taste of the dressing, but you'll end up eating way less dressing, save on the calories, but still get the taste and the comfort and the utility of the salad dressing. So burgers, fries, onion rings, uh, garbage salad, chopped salad, garden salad. All right, let's, let's, let's get to the real deal here. The real reason... Oh, and, and one more thing. Uh, I'm gonna, I was going to talk about this last, but let's save the best for last. They do have this ridiculous thing called the chocolate cake shake, and it is exactly what you would imagine. It's a chocolate cake made into a shake. It's chocolate thick cake. Their chocolate cake by itself, by the way, is delicious. That's another bonus point. Get the chocolate cake. Don't get the chocolate cake shake because... It is as ridiculous as you might imagine, and it, it to me, I, I love chocolate cake. I love chocolate. I love chocolate cake. I love chocolate cake with, especially with a big tall glass of ice cold milk. That is one of the greatest combinations. Uh, simple food home combinations that are possible. The other, another one is you know, uh, a warm apple pie and vanilla ice cream, of course. But the chocolate cake shake is a monstrosity. It is uh, an offense to any discerning appetite whatsoever, but people love it, people get it, um, and it's I me, mean, it's just ridiculous. I heard they put mayonnaise in it, I don't know, is that true? Partillo's people, please feel free to reach out and and, and enlighten me on, on, on the truth of this. Do they put mayonnaise in their chocolate cake shake? Or their chocolate cake? In the batter, in the frosting, or what? Why, what? Is this normal to put mayonnaise? in a milkshake or a chocolate cake or a chocolate cake milkshake i don't know i can google it but not i'm not gonna 
I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm afraid of the truth. The chocolate cake shake. All that being said, the real reason why I would strongly recommend, without irony, without, without, um, with no hesitation, without um, reservation, the Italian beef sandwich at Portillo's. Thank you very much, and you're welcome. Get the Italian beef. Get the Italian beef. Get the Italian beef. So what Italian beef is is basically, and again, you know, you can look it up on your own, but. Italian beef is basically a, a, a roast beef that's been cooked in this juice and then shredded, cut, th- uh, sliced, real, real, real thin. Um, good Italian beef, even though it's thin, it's going to be juicy. How they do it, I have no idea. I don't think they just sit it in the juice. I think they, it's separate. I have, I have no idea. Italian beef people, please enlighten me. So what you typically typically do is you get the thin roast beef, or we'll just call it Italian beef because I'm not completely sure what exactly it is. It's beef. Put that on a just on a standard, you know, like subway roll. You know what I'm saying? Like like a loaf of bread. You know, a thin, like ye size. You know, three inch by six inch by. Two inch, two and a half inch high, you know, slice of bread. You layer that Italian beef in there. You uh, give it some love. You give it some, either some jardinera peppers or hot peppers, which is just really, just peppers, just green peppers that have been cooked, and charred, ideally. You layer those those green peppers onto that beef. So far, so good, and I'll, I'll, just right there, you're you're pretty much set. So let's take it to the next level. Let's dip it, dip it. What do we mean by dip it? What I mean is that they they take this wonderful gravy, this wonderful au jus, and they just pour it over the Italian beef sandwich, and we call it dipping the sandwich. So, if, for example, if you go to Portillo's, you want to get the Italian beef sandwich, you say, I'll have an Italian beef um, with sweet peppers. Sweet is what you, the green peppers are. Uh, Italian beef, sweet peppers, dipped. And what you'll, do, what you'll end up getting is this heavy, soggy sandwich um, that is contained in a few layers of wax paper. And when you peel that sucker around, you just got to be careful that it doesn't sag and drip. And you take that in your mouth and you start biting, you start chewing, and all the juices are just running around having a good time in your mouth. You know what I mean? Like, it's really good. Why am I talking with a southern accent? Like, like a country accent? I don't know why. I don't know. I just, I think I was, I have, maybe, what, have I been watching southern TV? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to just roll with it because that's just the mood. That's just the mood I'm in, I'm in I guess. The juices are all flowing. And that's a good time. There's more. Let's take it to another level. Let's take that Italian beef, sliced. But you know what? Instead of putting it in a regular, you know, sandwich bread, uh, loaf, French, you know, French bread. What is it? Italian beef people, please enlighten me because I am an, forgive me, I am an ignorant fool. Uh, What kind of bread is that? Let's put it on a croissant. Yes, there I said it. Yes. Let's put it on a croissant. Okay. So we're going to put it on a croissant. So, you got this Italian beef on this buttery, crinkly, for right now, a croissant. You throw it in there. Same treatment. Put on the sweet peppers, hot peppers if you want, it's all good. And then you you dip it. Now, dip it, I mean, maybe in the old days they would actually dip the sandwich into the au jus vat. But, you know, we're more civilized. So, they just take the ladle and they just pour it over. Wrap it up. You got yourself a soggy-ass croissant Italian beef sandwich. Uh, But there's more. You can get it with cheddar cheese. (laughs) Cheddar cheese. So get the Italian beef. Throw it on the croissant. Throw in some cheddar cheese in there. Dip it with some peppers. And boy, that, that, that sandwich slides down your throat. It slides down your throat, coated in grease and fat and beef juice, and it is good. The Italian beef sandwich. 
Now let, let me let me just back up here and it's it might sound gross to you and it kind of is. I mean, let's be honest. Let's let's not let's not kid ourselves. It's it's, it's grossly unhealthy. Um, but that's the fucking point. It's unhealthy and delicious. Now, um, there are other Italian beef places. There's Al's Beef, which is like the classic Italian beef place, but it's not nearly as ubiquitous as Portillo's. At least, at least in this. Actually, no, in the city there aren't too many Portillo's. Actually, to be honest, but if you can get to a Portillo's, it's it's so um, like customer friendly. You just get in line, and they're very polite. And another great thing about Portillo's is that the the um, ordering system is you walk in, you you know there's a big big menu. I mean they have baby back ribs too, which I find were like okay, we're you know not amazing, but if you really want baby back ribs, get it. But if you're gonna go to Portillo's, get the Italian beef for God's sakes. Um, they have Maxwell Street Polish style dogs, you know, which is basically a, a fat ass sausage. Um, on a bun, and it's delicious. It's been a year since I've gotten it because I always get the Italian beef, but that's also pretty damn tasty. Get that too. Get you and your buddy, get one of each. If you're trying Portillo's for the first time, you're probably going to like the Italian beef more. I'm just going to tell you. But you know what? Get a Maxwell Street Polish, get an Italian beef, and split them and see what you like better. And then you'll, you're going to like Italian beef more. And then Get another one for the road or come back and you know, just get the Italian beef. Uh, and then you move on over. They give you a number, you know, they give you a receipt. And then they will go like, like Peter, Peter, uh, number, number 58, number 58. Okay, I'm sorry. That's really stupid. But um, my point is, you know, and they'll call your number and then they'll, they'll, uh, they'll get you your order. And if you ever see the drive through it's kind of ridiculous, but ridiculously awesome is that they... We'll have a drive through They'll have people outside calling in the orders because the lines can get so long in the drive through um, But my point is that they got their service down. They know what's up. They know what the hell they're doing. Um, and so most Portillo's, not all, I've had some bad service at one location, which I shall not name. Uh, most Portillo's have great customer service. Um, they got the process down and how to treat customers on how to move orders through and get the food out. Um, and so, you know, let's see. How, uh, it's been about a 15-minute podcast. I just want to give some love. If you're going to go to Chicago, like not even for a chain, I would say go to Portillo's. Um, it is one of the first places I think of when people say, you know, Peter, you know, what's a good eat in Chicago? Uh, one of the first things is, like, how far away are you from our Portillo's? Because that encapsulates Chicago food in a nutshell. If there's, like, one place that's going to encapsulate it, it's going to be Portillo's. Again, the other reason why I don't recommend the other places is that, um, you know, first of all, the service, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, there are places that I enjoy, which I shall not name, but then the service, like, sometimes they'll be, they'll be kind of rude. Or it's just kind of dingy and dirty portillo's is like tgi fridays but with good food do you know what i mean like it has like a lot of tchotchkes and you know it's like a carnival it's like a circus inside but the service is good the food is excellent and it's also i didn't mention it's a great value uh i think an italian beef i want to say runs like 6.95 or 7.95 but it's a big big sandwich you get that with fries and then the water you don't have to get a soda don't get a soda i mean if you want a soda have a soda but i usually never get soda just to save on the calories and save myself a couple of bucks or like 250 or 3 dollars and bam you you have a full meal for like 10 dollars which is really solid for really good iconic chicago uh, classic food uh, baby i'm taping the video camera too <laughs> okay that's okay okay Okay, that's all right. Um, so anyway, that is my rundown on Portillo's. How about you guys? What about you? Uh, what city are you from? Um, is there a chain that you would recommend, a restaurant chain for your city? Dallas, New York, Seattle, Minneapolis, I don't care, whatever. Where are you from and what is a chain restaurant restaurant chain that people need to check out? Um, I mentioned In-N-Out, mentioned Shake Shack, uh, mentioned, you know, Waffle House, there's Cracker Barrel, 
uh, there's a lot of restaurant chains that are worth checking out um, if you've never had it before, especially if you've never had it before. And people who are from Chicago, again, this is all opinion. Uh, what restaurant chain would you suggest for Chicago? If people were visiting Chicago for the first time and they wanted like one restaurant to capture the essence of Chicago food, what restaurant chain would you suggest instead? I mean, there's Harold's Chicken. Uh, I love Harold's Chicken. It's, Harold's Chicken is, is freaking awesome. But I, I wouldn't say that that encapsulates Chicago food. You know, uh, what else? What else? Like, you know, Carson's Ribs. Well, Carson's Ribs is kind of dead right now. It has been dead for a while. I mean, there's a few locations, but like two or three. Um, I didn't go into pizza because pizza is very like, if you like deep dish pizza, then you're going to love, you know, Lou Malnati's or Giordano's or Gino's East or wherever. There's a lot of Chicago, like Russian chains, but to capture like the essence of Chicago with a lot of different options um, that really can't be found in other places, you know, Portillo's is my pick. So comment below. Feel free to disagree. Give me your uh, opinions. Uh, if there's a, thanks for, uh, I need to work on my outro. So that's the end of today's show. Thanks for listening and watching. If there's a topic that you would like me to cover, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me at allthingsfoodpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you hit your, uh, like and subscribe button. If you are, are on YouTube, the music is by Dexter Britton at the beginning and end of the episode. Show notes can be found at peterbeatkim.com forward slash all things podcast. Thank you so much and stay hungry.